Having a correct and complete knowledge of the strokes in flat water is fundamental to being able to apply them in different types of water. The forward stroke is the stroke that allows us to propel the kayak straight forward. The forward stroke can be divided into four stages, the preparatory phase, the catch, propulsion and recovery. The preparatory phase. During the preparatory phase, the legs bend, the pelvis and torso rotate in torsion, the arm stretches in order to bring the blade forward, the upper hand has to be at eye level while the elbow must be lower than the shoulder. In the next phase, the working hand moves downwards in order to brace the blade against the water while the other arm moves the paddle slightly into the upright position. A firm catch allows efficient paddling. In order to check if you have the correct catch, it's enough to watch the blade. When it enters the water, there should be no visible spray. The movement should be done without pressure, that's why it's important to be relaxed. The propulsion phase allows the kayak to move. The stroke starts by pushing the feet on the footrest. It propagates through legs, pelvis and torso which rotates in torsion and then onto the arms which actually push and pull. The produced energy is transferred to the blade in the water and then through a backward procedure it reaches the boat again, allowing thus the craft to move. We can therefore say that the stroke starts from and ends with the feet. The pull is concluded when the elbow arrives level with the torso with the arm slightly bent. While the push of the upper part of the arm develops straight forward and follows the diagonal line which crosses the midline of the boat and ends by stretching the arm. What usually happens is that too much importance is given to the pull. In order to obtain the maximum efficiency, it's better to concentrate on the push, since the pull is actually a spontaneous movement. The movement of recovery starts from the hand, which goes upward and arrives at the height of the face. In this phase, it's very important to be relaxed. If the movement is executed correctly, it feels as if the blade slips out of the water without creating any friction. At the end of the recovery, you'll find yourself again in the preparatory phase, ready to make the movement on the other side. In the paddling cycle, the end of one stroke represents the beginning of the following one. That's why it's so important to perform it correctly. We define a high stroke as one where the shaft is in a vertical position and the blade works close to the kayak. This kind of paddling guarantees a major push forward and reduces the rotation of the stroke. However, the low stroke is the one where the shaft is lowered towards the water surface and the action of the blade takes place far away from the kayak's edge and ends in the back area. This type of stroke guarantees major stability, especially in rough water, 
and allows major control of the direction, although it does slow the kayak. A good kayaker must know how to use and mix these two types of paddling, depending on the situation. This stroke allows the kayak to move backwards. During the preparatory phase, we draw the torso slightly back and rotate it towards the onside. We look backwards at the goal we want to reach. The blade must enter the water perpendicularly with respect to the water's surface, with its back face turned forward. During the propulsion phase of the stroke, all the tension is concentrated almost exclusively on the torso, which rotates and bends forward and transmits the force to the kayak by pushing the pelvis against the backrest. The arms have no function during the pull and push, they just accompany the torso movement. The blade must be pulled out of the water, level with your feet. The forward sweep is the basic stroke that makes the kayak go round. By rotating the torso, the grip between the blade and the water takes place near the kayak's bow, while the power face of the blade must be turned outwards. This stroke exploits all the workspace and ends when the blade reaches the kayak's stern. The tension is concentrated mainly on the torso. The arms simply follow the rotation of the torso. During the forward sweep, the abdominal muscles and legs have the most important role, which push on the footrests and thigh braces in the same direction you want the kayak to go, and thus allow the rotation. You can watch the blade while practicing, but once learned the basic technique, your look must be turned towards the goal you want to reach. It can be considered as the opposite of the forward sweep. During the back sweep, the movement starts from the stern and ends at the bow, while using the back face of the blade. The torso must be rotated towards the onside. The grip between the blade and the water takes place level with your hips. The working hand must be stretched and the power face of the blade must be turned towards the kayak center. The lower hand pulls towards the kayak while the upper part of the arm pushes outwards. The hip is slightly lifted in order to help the kayak's movement. The movement ends when the paddle is completely in the upright position and close to the kayak. The recovery phase takes place in the water when the blade is sliced back into the catch position. The torso is rotated towards the onside. During the continuous sideways shifting, the blade moves constantly without interruption along an axis which is parallel to the kayak and thus exploits the central part of the workspace. The power face, turned forwards and backwards, searches for the water resistance in order to move the kayak. The working hand is stretched while the upper hand, with its forearm positioned at the height of your forehead, 
has the task of keeping the paddle shaft in the upright position, thus pushing towards the onside. The movement starts from the torso with a slight rotational torsion to and fro. In both movements, the pelvis pushes in the direction we want to move the kayak. The bow rudder is the most elegant stroke of all the kayak techniques, and it allows us to rotate the kayak around a fixed point. The torso rotates and at the same time moves the blade in the back part of the workspace. The paddle tends to go upright, and the power face must be turned towards the kayak's bow. Yeah. The hand on the one side is slightly bent, while the upper one is bent in such a way as to be able to put your forearm above your forehead. Once you find the correct grip in the water, all the pressure of the movement which brings the kayak's bow closer to the blade is concentrated on the lower limbs, torso, and finally on the pull of the lower arm and the push of the upper arm, which will bring the paddle completely to a vertical position. The bow rudder may be performed more backwards or forwards, depending on how much we want to rotate the kayak. Generally, the bow rudder is always initiated and followed by another paddling stroke. The first stroke starts the boat turning in the direction of the bow rudder as a kind of stroke preparation. The second one gives the propulsion in the new direction determined by the bow rudder. The blade is used as a kind of rudder in the back workspace. Depending on your needs, it pulls towards the stern or it pushes outwards. Stern ruddering is a type of stroke which allows us to control the kayak's direction easily and precisely. This is a stroke that enhances the pushing action of the lower limb starting from the pelvis. The torso bends forward and then it stretches backwards, thus allowing a strong push of the hips. The blade exploits all the space at its disposal and ends at the stern where you can carry out stern ruddering in order to control the direction. The boof stroke is considered like a turbo stroke. We should use it whenever the kayak has to be given speed. This kind of stroke is very useful when running white water. The boof stroke is generally carried out with long strokes, but it can be combined with short ones as well. The brace strokes are fundamental to maintain or regain balance.
The principle of how it works is to find a catch on the water in order to rewrite the kayak with a movement of the lower limbs. The back face of the blade moves from the back workspace towards the front and it is positioned at an acute angle in relation to the water surface. The working hand is bent with the elbow turned upwards and the torso rotates towards the on side while the other hand has the task of keeping the shaft of the paddle in a horizontal position. While the blade moves forwards, it creates friction that allows us to rewrite the kayak thanks to an action of the pelvis and the legs. This kind of brace stroke is used in situations of a slight loss of balance. The power face of the blade moves from the front workspace towards the back and it is positioned at an acute angle in relation to the water surface. This stroke makes it possible to rewrite the kayak in situations of significant loss of balance. The working hand bends and forearm remains perpendicular in relation to the blade. The upper hand is completely bent and the elbow is in contact with the torso. This position allows us to not overload the shoulder. When we bring the blade back from the final position of the stroke towards the kayak's bow and the power face is turned towards the front, we are performing a recovery high brace. Linking together several braces and their recovery allows us to keep the unstable position for a long time. This is called the continuous brace. After having mastered all the basic strokes, it's very important to learn to combine them together in all the possible ways in order to obtain skills that will help us move in rough water. Here are some examples. Forward stroke, ruddering. Forward stroke, sweep at stern. Forward sweep, back sweep. Bow rudder, forward stroke, bow rudder. Forward stroke, bow rudder. Boof stroke, ruddering, bow rudder.
Okay. Forward stroke, low brace. Forward stroke, high brace. High brace, low brace. Low brace, bow rudder. High brace, bow rudder. And so on. Once you learn the basic movements, practicing and enhancing your skills is fundamental in order to develop your abilities as a kayaker. Slipping out. Cross forward. Reverse paddling with power face. Cross forward with propeller stroke. Canadian style paddling stroke. Balance. Paddle hurling. And so on.